the state of Punjab. And just keep in mind that the numbers that you're about to see assume that the Aam Aadmi Party and the Congress will find a way of fighting together. But this is a state where AAP and Congress are one and two. And whenever two parties are one and two, they typically find it very difficult to be able to distribute seats amongst themselves. Between two and three, it's much easier than it is between parties that are one and two. But since that's the way it is seeming on the surface, that's the calculation that we're about to show you. So here are the numbers for Punjab. I'm going to start by taking a look at the vote share numbers first. The BJP had 10% vote share in the previous Lok Sabha elections, that's now projected to go up to 17. Uh, that's 7% 7 up. Uh, the Aam Aadmi Party had 7% vote share in the last Lok Sabha elections, that's now projected to go up to 27, that's 20% 20 up from the last time. The Congress had 40% vote share in the last elections, that's now projected to come down to 38, that's 2% down from the last time. The Akalis had 28% vote share, that's now projected to come down to 14, a loss of 14% for the once formidable Akalis. Let's take a look at how this converts into seats. So on your screen right now, for the 13 seats of Punjab, here are the Sea Voter India Today Mood the Nation projections. Sea Voter is projecting that the BJP is likely to stay at two seats. They're two. Uh, they're likely to stay at two. What's gone out from the NDA kitty there are the Akali seats. The AAP uh, is expected to be at five seats. That's up four from the last time. If we see the party-wise breakup of these seats, uh, the Akalis were at two that's likely to come down to one. So the BJP holds on to its two seats. Uh, the AAP goes up from one to five. Remember, in the first election they fought in 2014, they had four seats. Uh, so they go up to five this time. The Congress at five, there were eight last time, so they're down three. And the Akalis are at one, down two. Now what could change potentially, Yashwant, is if at the last moment, the Akalis and the BJP are able to tie, because behind the scenes is a lot happening. It's not firm, finalized, both sides haven't decided. The Akalis we know are keen, the BJP is 50-50, wishy-washy, but that can change any time. And if that changes, how does that potentially change these numbers? Of course, I mean, that, that would be having some impact for sure, because uh, I guess that uh, between the Akalis and the BJP, even though there has been a quite a lot of bad blood in the recent years, uh, the, as far as the core voting is concerned, they are pretty much supplementary in nature. The core has been anti-Congress vote at large, which the Akalis and the BJPs have been tending together. So this separation might have split it vertically because BJP ran away with the Hindu votes and Akalis were with their Panthic votes. But if they come together, definitely that will have an impact. But uh, 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 what, it will not be the same kind of seat sharing, uh, Rajdeep, that is for sure. Because wherever BJP is going back with their old allies, the seat sharing equation is no more the same, which sure. was defined by Vajpayee and Advani. But you know, yeah. this is a fascinating state, Raj Chengappa, because the alliances have, stay, have changed dramatically in the last few years. The BJP and the Akalis were together. AAP versus Congress was the battle uh, of Punjab. They've now come together. They may not have chemistry on the ground. Would you really believe that this AAP Congress alliance will work in the end? and actually see the arithmetic benefits that this poll is suggesting? Or do you believe in the end, uh, it'll be very difficult for AAP and Congress to actually fight Punjab together, which may be another twist to these numbers. It's my favorite state since I was uh, there as editor-in-chief of the Tribune. But I think here, let's take Sanjay's argument of brand Modi and a referendum on that. How much of that is going to play out in Punjab? It never happened when Rajiv Gandhi, in, 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 uh, you know, it was a very troubled state, of course, you know, at that particular time. So uh, the Congress never benefited at that time because of the wave that happened. So if you look at uh, it currently, if the AAP and the Congress get together, they're a decisive force. Have they got together? Have they agreed on anything? That is not to be seen as yet. No, but, but can I counter do. what you're saying to say? that it's almost impossible. How will you decide? If you're one and two in that state, on a drawing board, you can say whatever you want. Given the problems in Uttar Pradesh, given the problems in Bihar, it is very difficult. In Delhi, they may still have some kind of an arrangement. In Punjab, they'll ultimately come to the conclusion that it's better for us to fight separately. No, they may well do that, Raul. They actually seem to believe that that might even work to their favor. That, you know, you have a multiple, multi corner No, so I'm saying then the premise of the poll for Punjab is flawed because it, it hypothetically assumes uh, that but, they're fighting together. Yeah, sure. But the one thing about Punjab, to take from what Raj Chengappa said, and that's the fascinating part of Punjab, uh, Sanjay Kumar, it's the one state the one state in North India where the Modi wave has not worked both in 2014 and 19. 
Look at both these elections. The Congress, if there's one state in northern India, held its own in the last 10 years, it's Punjab. Is there, you seeing the politics of Punjab, therefore it's very distinct and different from the rest of the country in a way. Uh, two factors. Even though the, the political clout of Shiromani Akali Dal has com come down, but look at the states where regional parties are strong. BJP has not found it easy to make inroads. That's one case why in Punjab BJP has not been able to make inroads. Second, BJP has been contesting in Punjab in alliance with Akalis. So Akalis have been a dominant player. That was a difficulty in the Bihar also for the first couple of decades. Also, look at the social composition of Punjab. In Punjab, we have a very large majority of Sikh voters. So if you look at Ahmadbi, uh, BJP's popularity, Narendra Modi's popularity, there is some difference if you look at among the Hindus and people belonging to different other religion. That is another factor why BJP has not been able to penetrate in Punjab the way they have been able to expand in other parts no, of the country. No, but the calculation in the BJP and Shahzad can build on this. I'll also show you the uh, projection for Chandigarh, which is expected to go to the BJP. It's an urban pocket, and we saw the mess in the mayoral elections recently, but the poll is predicting that Chandigarh goes to the BJP. The problem is both the Home Minister and the Prime Minister have have often say that they're very emotionally invested in the Punjab story. And yet, on the ground, we see, especially amongst the Sikhs, this pushback. So how does this square? The fact that the Prime Minister himself feels so emotionally close to the Punjabi community, to the Sikh religion, and yet there is a lot of antipathy and a very strong pushback. Uh, Rahul, look, uh, what Sanjayji was saying just now, that since we were the younger brother in the alliance, and that alliance was not purely for political reasons, it was also for ensuring the message of Sabka Saath and Samajik Sohar between the Hindu Sikh community. And therefore, we sacrificed a lot of our space and a lot of the other things also while we were in that alliance. For the first time now, we are finding our feet in Punjab, not just in urban areas, but also in the rural pockets. And therefore, this vote is a vote of expansion. It is a vote of credit credibility that will keep increasing over the few period of years and look at the outreach that Prime Minister Modi has done towards the Sikh community. It is not a political outreach, it is an emotional outreach, whether it is celebrating the Prakash Parbs of the great gurus of the Sikh community, whether it is celebrating Veer Balas Divas or whether it is reaching out to various sections, whether it is the FCRA clearance on Harminder Sahib, Langars that we are uh, making GST free. So I think there is a concerted effort. Not everything is done only for political purpose. Some things are beyond politics. For Rashtraniti, we have done a lot of things and I think that is also being reflected because Punjabis are very patriotic people. They will, they are ready to sacrifice their lives for the nation. They have contributed so much to the armed forces and I think you will develop, you will see because the kind of mismanagement Aam Aadmi Party is doing. Look at the Nasha Mafia, look at the kind of corruption that is taking place. I am not saying this. Mr. Sidhu is saying about the corruption and okay. also the alliance now, the thing between Congress and here in Punjab, Amit Aap Aap is if they is fight unwood. separately, this calculation and you are seeing the India numbers projected by C voter to zoom up in terms of vote share very substantially, all that is based on the assumption that they fight together. Uh, if they don't fight together, and if this is the base where Akalis are at 27% vote share, up 20 from the last time, Congress is at 38% vote share, down up 2 at 27. from the last time, up at 27, up 20, Congress at 38, down 2, Akalis at 14, down 14. How could Punjab read in the absence of this alliance? See, Punjab is the hotbed of anti-center politics. So even if AAP and Congress do not form an alliance, and unless the, sub, the Akali Dal forms an alliance with the BJP, these numbers could still hold. So unless the Akali Dal ties up with the BJP, I don't see a substantial difference in the numbers because the politics itself there is anti-center. Hindu being the majority in the rest of the country, but being a minority there complicates the political dynamics there.